I've just reviewed your game, and I've got to be honest, it's a bit weird. Let's try and kill this thing. <laughs> Alright then. There are many games that hit the market and sit there unnoticed for better or worse. But player feedback is important, both for the game and career. So, I've just reviewed these three games and hope to offer another pair of eyes. Which is a bit ironic, coming from a stick man that hasn't opened his eyes in years. L let's just start- Alright, so the first game is King of Swords, where you survive against stinky people and hit things. Is it dead? It's dead. I think. I think it's dead. No, it's coming back up. I just gotta keep beating it. And there's another one, just spawned right behind me. I went into this knowing it was gonna be a bit weird, but honestly, I didn't expect it to be like this, and there's a bit of a twist to this story. Now, according to the Steam description, the game is early access, even though it's not in early access, and after a bit of digging, it was a legitimate early access game, but came out to release in October this year. So just to avoid any confusion, I'm reviewing this as a released but clearly unfinished game, which may explain why the options button doesn't work and why the multiplayer servers are fake. You can see that there's a lot of copy and paste going on, and I don't think any of these are real. I don't know, man. Let's refresh. Failed. Okay. Oh, how do I go back? Yeah, alright. Yeah, okay. Let's just, uh, let's just move on to the negatives because, unfortunately, there isn't much to say in the way of positives. Alright, this, this is- whoa! What? <laughs> okay. Um, this is the tutorial. I could see my eyes. Eye for inventory. Brilliant, I'm getting attacked already. I don't know how to get out of my inventory. What is going on? Like, this is the weirdest I've- It's so disorientating. I again? Okay. Right. I'm dead. Apparently this isn't- Well, now I'm through the map. Okay. R to respawn. I think it's very- I think it's very clear, um, like, what, what's going on here. Uh, the game is just broken. I think it's fair to say that a tutorial is meant to teach you the controls, mechanics, and systems in place so that you understand how to play the game. I had no idea what was going on here, and trust me, I really did give it a go. It picked something up. Don't know what that is. 80 health now. Can I sprint? I'm just gonna kind of take the hits. I don't know, man. I'm so confused. This felt more like a playtest than anything else. Everything was just thrown into one place. I mean, I did find some controls on the wall and some controls do appear on screen, but that's all I could really find and absorb before getting wrecked every time. I'm not a dev or a teacher, but a step-by-step -step tutorial would be useful. Introduce a set of controls. Give me something to practice with. Rinse and repeat. Anyway, next point. I thought that if I couldn't learn anything from the tutorial, then maybe I could learn something from the main level. And you know what? I'm I'm just gonna let the gameplay speak for itself. Okay. No, it's it's still really weird. Whoa! Okay. Now I could see top down. Interesting. Pressing S to go down typically takes me this way. Pressing A. What I don't even know. This guy is a shop. And do I Okay, cool. So I, f I can figure out how to use the shop. If you crouch, uh, you just kind of slide like this. It's amazing. Hold on a second. I I've just seen something. There we go. Apparently I can pee. This is a great example of y you need to make sure that the game at its core just works before adding anything else on top of it. Because I guarantee it is just it's just assets that they bought or used. And um, that's just mixed in with spaghetti code. After about 20 minutes, I had no idea what I was meant to do. Besides, I guess this quest that appeared on my screen saying that I must talking to with village civilists, who I think is meant to be this guy. Why, why is he why is he cowering? I'd, how do I accept this quest? Okay, so uh, what happened is I just pressed tab and now I'm dead. The biggest issue I have with this game is that things have been thrown in and nothing is explained. As you may have already seen, the inventory in this game is just a wheel with the same healing spell. And apparently, you can build things. I don't know what, I don't know how, but according to an update in June, this is functional. Well, apparently I have these resources, but I don't really know how this works. What am I supposed to do? Okay, now I'm... 
Well, I, okay, now it's just stuck on my screen. What the f There are also some RPG elements. Like, for example, you can level up different parts of your body, including your bladder, which, for me, uh, attracted some unwanted attention. What? Oh, for Christ's sake, man. Oh, God. What well, can I move, please? Just let me move. Okay, he can just stay there. I've, I've spawned in a piss demon, and now he's after me. I'm a firm believer that a good gameplay loop can carry a game pretty far. And after playing this for a while, the loop, I'm gonna be honest, wasn't that interesting. As you can see, there are survivor mechanics, and you basically just kill things to make money, to buy stuff, to replenish all of this. And the idea, according to the Steam description, is that something is meant to appear or come after you once this 10 minute timer gets to zero. I'm gonna save you some time, Nothing happens, so uh, let's move on. Combat, as you may have already seen, is a bit rough. This is not a good situation to be in, uh, but can I, can I poop? Yes, I can poop. I am pooping right now. That's, that's amazing. Amazing mechanics. And he's not even attacking me. He's just letting me poop. All right, real talk here. There is no communication between hits. All you hear is a swing, and then there's nothing telling me that I've actually hit the ghost. All I, all, all I can see is that I've just knocked it over. And apparently I just got some Bitcoin. What the f- Let's get some HP. Give me that, please. Give me- Oh, there's a giant thing. I'm dead. For a game called King of Swords, I struggled very much to find a sword. I mean, to be clear, I did find one in the tutorial, but in the main level, nothing. So because I couldn't find anything, I went back to the title screen, changed my character to this guy with a halberd, but for whatever reason, I couldn't figure out how to use it. How do I get my axe off my back? Is it possible? I've just pressed N. Apparently that's the map. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So if, if, if N does this, then M... Hang on. How do they even achieve that? I'm going to see if I can try and survive in this, in this town. I've not found any weapons yet that I can use besides the axe on my... F Anything in here? No, it's just an empty building. Cool. There's another empty building. You can see inside that there is nothing. What what is this? Okay. Right. I I think I found the town center. I don't like what how what is that? How do you explain that? Why is it like that? What why is the Why am I dead? Originally, I was going to write this game off as just someone trying out game dev for the first time, not really knowing how to lay the foundations. But here's where I'm going to introduce the twist to this story. <laughs> Before King of Swords came a Zombieland Survival, released in Early Access November 2022. Now to be clear, it's still in Early Access, and to keep things simple, here are some clips of my experience. Tutorial wise, this is a little bit less chaotic, I guess. But the camera works pretty well here, I don't, I don't get why that it didn't work in the, in the last game. Oh, you can look inside the car- oh my god, that is not healthy. Jesus Christ. I've tried for ages trying to make this car work, but it's not working. I, I don't actually know how to drive in this game. Oh shit. Oh my god, okay. So <laughs> you got minecarts in this game. I'm not gonna lie, man, this is this is a lot more fun than the last one. At least I can do stuff, like goofy stuff like this. Alright. I've just loaded into the forest. The hell is going on? Am I waiting for things to load in? What is going on? I just died. Random respawn. Okay. Oh, oh right. Okay. Right, so you can collect wood fairly normally in this game. There's no feedback to when you smack a tree. But uh, there you go. It fell over. Who is this guy? Look at him. It's just some weird zombie dog thing. Ooh. Okay. Right. All right. Didn't realize. Okay. Now I'm stunned. Right, stunning in this game is so lame and I'm dead. There's two men here. Okay. Right, yeah, okay, this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> it's the Herobrine of the game. Look at his eyes. For another game stuck in alpha made by the same dev, this in comparison isn't as bad. Now don't get me wrong, it's not good, it's wacky as hell, and I spent most of my time in this casino on an island just, just full of zombies. But at least the first person camera works, and at least the tutorial gives you a chance to learn. But the twist goes a little bit deeper, because after King of Swords came a fairly well put together free to play platformer called Royale Kings, that is, also in early access. And out of all three, this one was the best. It's just a fun Fall Guys inspired party game that's simple enough and makes sense. Just gotta get down as fast as possible. Take it all the way down. Oh shit. Did I win? 
Winner. Yay. Hey, I won. Everyone else sucks. I don't know about you, but I've got a feeling that King of Swords, just like Zombieland, is going to be stuck in early access for a while. I mean, for example, the dev clearly doesn't know when they'll get Zombieland done. There are no specific milestones or any real definition of done here. And that's pretty much the same for King of Swords. Now, to me, it looks like they've had an idea for a game. Didn't really put much on paper, got a bit lost with it, had another idea for another game, went at it without much thought, adding more to their workload before jumping onto something else. My advice with any project is to plan hard, define your definition of done, and set realistic milestones for what you want to achieve, before aimlessly making something, putting it on the market, and having to commit because people bought into it. But yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to give King of Swords a piss demon out of 10. And you know what? I'll throw in these for free as well. The next game is UFO The Ranch, a sci-fi action adventure about medium-sized grey men with zappy guns. It sounds interesting, but unfortunately this one, this one drove me insane. So first, let's take a look at the positives. A whole bunch of uh, stretched Pringles. Nice. There is a tutorial, but this one's a bit of a mixed point. As you could already tell, I like tutorials. They help me to understand the game before getting into the thick of it. And after a short cutscene of us driving to a place called Bad Light County, it begins. Although I do have to say, the tutorial feels a little bit random. All you do is follow green markers and the controls are thrown at you without much thought. I mean, for example, I learn how to roll uh, after getting a drink. I'm just gonna get myself some Nixon Cola. Reload, action, equip, sprint, menu, roll. Is this a Souls-like? Can I actually roll? There it is. Actually, come to think of it, this was a bit of a weird tutorial. I mean, they make you go to the roads just to learn combat. But at the moment, there's nothing for me to fight besides attempting to punch an NPC. Can I kill people? Guess I can't. Right then, on to the negatives. <laughs> Yeah, no options here on the title screen and none in game. For obvious reasons, options in any game are quite useful, especially options for graphics. And the one review that appeared whilst recording this video complains about the uh, the low FPS. Something I didn't experience that much, but I did in the cutscenes. But hey, at least I have a controls list that I can only access on the title screen. Keep this point in mind for later, because in this game, going back to the title screen isn't the best idea. I can move at least. Okay, here's a problem. My cursor isn't locked into the screen. That's already a massive issue. Like, come on, PC games, please. The clip speaks for itself, but this is a PC game. A lot of people have second monitors to obviously watch my content on. And if you are, smash like. And for those watching on mobile, re remember to wipe. Okay, so after the tutorial, there are some helicopters that go overhead, as, as well as some jets. And going back to the car, it's very clear that shit be going down at the ranch. So naturally, in a low FPS cutscene, we make our way there. And when we get there, we're tasked with the objective to investigate the area. An old jeep seems to work, but some parts are missing. Okay. Note about a key. Okay, E to climb. Brilliant. I guess I wasn't supposed to go up here. Old map. Can't interact with this stuff. It's just kind of here. Why do I have to go over here? None of the, literally none of this makes sense. Okay. Well, now I've got to go back over here. What? What's up with these weird location pins? I... This investigation is a good setup for what's to come because all I'm doing is going from one random waypoint to another and that's it. No actions required and you can't even pick up any of the items you find. It's so lazy that I didn't even need to go into this house here. You, you can actually see the marker disappear and change to the next location, but because I thought I was investigating, I of course went inside. This was all purely just to set up for the cutscene afterwards where you go back to your car and the aliens arrive, brutally abducting a cow. There you go, they've abducted a cow. 
When you play a game about aliens, you look forward to fighting aliens. It's an alien. Oh shit, okay. Killed it. If you thought that first encounter was a little bit meh, then we're on the same page. There wasn't any cutscene or intro to this encounter. I just found them in the field and started shooting. And it's not that you need an intro or a cutscene. That's not a requirement, but it's just kind of like they're there. That's it. Now, here's the thing about combat. If I can see an enemy in the distance, shoot them and kill them before they get to me with the handgun I started with, should I be worried? No. Unfortunately, enemies in this game are more of a time sink than anything fun, and combat really does just boil down to, I see enemy in the distance, I shoot enemy before they get to me, and I win. It's sad to say, but the only interesting encounter I had was when they introduced drones for the first time. Yeah, I finally made it to this cabin. Let's see uh, how this game progresses. Oh, Christ! Okay, that's new. All right. Whoa, they got drones now. Not gonna lie, that, 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 yeah, that caught me off guard. Okay. In hindsight, a shotgun would have been good for this encounter, and I did find one earlier, but enemies don't spawn in buildings. They're always out in the open, so why would I use a close quarters weapon? Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm actually gonna do it. I'm just gonna use a shotgun close range. What's this like? There you go, it's pretty good. But I actually take damage, so. Shot, shotgun ain't that good, man. As if the aliens weren't threatening enough, ammo is in abundance. I mean, just, just, just look at how much I had in about 20 minutes of gameplay. So yeah, aliens kind of mid. This is it so far. This is what the gameplay is like. Running around. I thought there'd be a bit more action to it, but the action so far is just, you see an alien, uh, if it gets too close to you, it'll try and zap you. If not, you'll probably kill it. And there you go. Is there anything else to it? Not really. Core mechanic wise, it's it's very basic. Have you ever played a game that takes you from point A to B to A again to C, then row 20, column D? The gameplay loop here is unfortunately very dull and I'm gonna give you some context. After the cow abduction, the UFO let off an EMP frying all vehicles and electronics nearby besides this, uh, this record player. So your task is to find components for this Jeep to drive away and call for backup. That is the main objective. But this is what I'd like to call a key hunting game where most of it is just this. Now don't get me wrong, the game does have a bunch of different locations, and some of them do look relatively interesting. But there are some other places like this power plant that are just completely useless. Oh, hang on. Turn on the power. Okay, that hurt. Was it worth it? I, I, well, in hindsight, no. To really nail this point down, I'm going to use the in-game map and just give you two examples of travel in this game. The first component you're going to find is the battery, and you'll figure this out once you go to Pablo's cabin following a waypoint there. When you make it to Pablo's cabin, you'll find a note saying that the battery is in the warehouse office. Fair enough. But I'm going to point something out here. Uh, notes in this game, you can find them in your inventory, which is great, but for whatever reason, you can't read them from here. You have to go all the way back to the source, which is really not too helpful. Anyway, when you get to the warehouse, you realize that you need a key to open the office. God damn it, man. And to get the key, you need to explore the warehouse area, where you'll find Pablo's cabin key. So of course, with this key, you go back to Pablo's cabin. Well, would you look at that? I've just found the office key, which means now I've got to go all the way back to the warehouse. Just, to, <laughs> it's where I came from. And uh, yeah, it should, uh, should, should be fun. Here we go. Here's the office. Got another first aid kit and nice. I can return to my vehicle. Brilliant. I can apply the battery to my vehicle. Nice. This is the proper way of doing it, but in reality, the map for me uh, looked a bit like this. You see, my mistake is that I didn't explore the warehouse area enough, and I just started going all around the map trying to find a key to the office. But when I made it down to here, I discovered that the only thing blocking off new areas were fences that demand progress. Find slash install the battery to take this route. Okay. Uh, find and install the spark plug to take this route. Why? 
Like, I have to get over there, but how? I think it's safe to say that it's kind of weird that I need a battery to unlock a fence, but um, this brings us on to probably the most damning example of travel in this game. The first location in this new area was a jailhouse, and I could see a key that was locked in a cell. After reading a note in here, it became very clear that I had to find a key to unlock the cell to get this key. And the key that I need is at a place called Carla's Hippie Farm, or something like that, man. I'm not even looking at the map at this point. I'm just reading the script and reading living the experience. But anyway, the hippie lives here and I'm currently here. Which path do you think I need to take? Okay, so get this right. The, the, there's a whole bunch of rocks here. I can't get past them, okay? But on the other side is Carla's hippie farm. And uh, as you can see, I've got to go all the way around just to get there. And Diego's house, you see that line next to the road there? That means I've got to go all the way around. This is insane. This has to be one of the most obvious attempts to extend playtime I think I've ever seen. And getting there was just this. Shoot drone, shoot alien, find another place that requires a key, and I went over a small bridge. Now when I finally got to Carla's hippie farm, I went inside, I could see that she was, uh, she was into some weird shit, so I went upstairs and found the key. But this was the moment I made a, uh, I made a pretty big realization. What the fuck, man? Okay. Can I, can I actually get up here? There we go. Hey, look at that. I've got the park ranger key. I've got the park ranger key. And that's the only thing here. Guess what? To go back, to go back and use that key, I need to go all the way down there, which means I have to go all the way back round. All the way back round to there. You know what, man? I'm done for now, okay? I think I've seen enough. I don't think there's anything else to offer. I, 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 I couldn't care less. I really could not care less. Yeah, my uh, my reward for getting this key was to go all the way back the way I came. And was there anything different on the way back? No. So when I got back to the jailhouse, I logged off to take a break. Which leads us on to the next point. Okay. No way. But would you look at that? I've loaded back into the game. There is no load game, there is no nothing like that, but I'm all the way back here. So all that progress that I made, all that time spent, if I come out of the game, I have to start from the, the beginning again. There were no saves, no auto saves, no loading this or that from the title screen. All that time spent was for nothing besides content. This game came out in 2023 with no save system. Honestly, this just brought back trauma from when I was a poor kid trying to beat Sonic Heroes in one day because, <laughs> because I couldn't afford a bloody memory card. Even if this game did have a save system, it just wouldn't be fun. The combat is dull, the gameplay is mostly running from one point to another, even worse with invisible walls cutting off the shortest of shortcuts. I mean, I could have just walked back to the station, called for backup and got ready for bed in the time it took me to get to Carla's bloody hippie farm. I tried to find the fun, but couldn't find it. And it's brutal to say, but this game feels soulless. Like they had to make a game instead of wanting to. I do apologize if that sounds a bit harsh, but that's how I feel. So for that, I'm going to give this game a stretched Pringles can out of 10. So far, we've seen a lot of negatives, but the future project may just change that. It's a Metro Prime inspired game made by one person and as simple as it looks, it wasn't that bad. What am I meant to do about this? <laughs> well, the animation's perfect. Okay. The concept is that you explore a simulation built to prepare AI for planetary exploration. However, something or someone outside of the project gained access and is hell-bent on taking it down. This game did a decent enough job to keep me hooked to the end. So let's start with the positives. Am I in heaven? I won't dwell on this point, but this tutorial is a great example as to what I meant earlier with the step-by-step -step process. For example, straight past the golden gates, the game tells you to lock onto these orbs and shoot them. It tells you the controls to do this, but only when relevant. The same goes for outside of the tutorial when you find power-ups later. You're told there and then how to use the thing you've just found and then given a chance to practice. The game even recognizes when you use a controller. I mean, it changes the keys to buttons. And this is by no means anything 
revolutionary. It's just a small gesture that tells me that they care about the user experience. And before I forget, Yes, there are options in this game, and they are fully customizable, even with multiple sound sliders. In this line of business, you don't see that every day. Oh God, okay, okay. Jesus Christ, that's loud. I had a decent amount of fun playing this game, running through seven uniquely themed levels, discovering weird creatures, and <laughs> fighting many interesting bosses. There you go. <laughs> yes, that's the that's, that is the best death animation I think I've ever seen. Congratulations, game. Well done. This game is unapologetically a Metroidvania. The map is your best friend, showing you rooms you've already found, paths you need to take, and different colored doors that require specific elemental powers to open. This being a Metroid-inspired game, there are also stations for health, missiles, and elemental powers. You can also save in this game thanks to the save station and talking from recent experience. I don't care what this thing looks like, I like it. The most player friendly thing about these stations is that they're also always placed just before a boss fight. So you don't have to travel all the way back after you die each and every single time. Right. NPCs as well. Oh god. Exploration is almost always rewarded. No path felt like a waste of time. And if I didn't find any power up, I would always find some kind of upgrade for health, missiles, or even just increased capacity for elemental abilities. Speaking of which, there are four elements, fire, ice, electric, and earth. But also, late game, you'll find the ability to slow down time as well as teleport, which can be a little bit tricky at times. Just as important, you can also find upgrades for your suit to help traverse tricky terrain or strafe out of harm's way. For a Metroid-inspired game, it's all standard stuff. However, nothing quite beats finding an upgrade that gives you access to a whole other area. Now, at times, the experience was repetitive, but each level has its own set of challenges. From killing spicy tentacles to reduce lava levels to resolving electrical hazards to even platforming across pterodactyls which which was not easy. Do this. Let's just do this. Let's just... Oh, okay. I just gotta... Oh shit! Oh god, this sucks, man. Now, graphics-wise, you can see that the game looks a little bit simple. I mean, for example, this alien level looks like a first-person view of a spore city. But as goofy as it all looks, I really didn't mind. My god, okay. <laughs> we got a got a reptile, and I got a whatever the hell that thing is. Oh god, he's always oh, he's throw a rock at him. Oh, he's dead. Well, this guy. Where is he? There he is. <laughs> it's such a basic model, but I kind of like it. It doesn't matter how fresh you are to 3D uh, modeling, right? Just it, at least give it a go. The person who made this, you know, this could be the starting point for them and they'll improve later. That's what it's all about. I still stand by this point. Yes, enemies look like Play-Doh, but at least it's homemade. And by that, the dev made it their own. To me, that shows a love for the process. And speaking of enemies, they hit the mark for variation. Like these dinosaurs with rock masks that are weak to missiles. These electric flies that you can stone to death. Or these mushrooms with bulletproof caps that force you to get close. And these weird bean things. Whoa! I, I honestly, man, I thought it was just a bean. But it's um, it's a bit more than that, isn't it? It's a weird ass insect with multiple mouths. Now, this game has a fairly decent story that, knowing me, would take a bit too long to explain. But the story elements do a good job of keeping you on track. Every now and then, you'd find one of these corrupted messages appearing on screen. And sometimes this guy would just appear out of nowhere. But most of the story is told via the conversations between employees who are working on the simulation. And I've got to say, it can be an interesting read at times. Quite the training regime these hypothetical aliens have. Gotta get that ideal alien physique. Do you think they would care about abs the way we do? Maybe they're more about, I don't know, neck muscles? Never skip tentacle day. Jesus Christ, Wes. What kind of conversation did I stumble upon? I think I'm in the same boat as Owen here. All of these elements come together to make the gameplay an overall positive experience, but there are some negative points behind combat. Yeah, right. This is where I'm gonna go. 
I hate to say it, but the clip speaks for itself. Combat is mostly just point and shoot, with maybe a strafe here and there. The different abilities do change things up, but I never felt the need to really use them unless maybe I needed to stone something in place. Now, it's not to say that I hated combat, but enemies don't really drop anything besides ammo and health, so I would avoid ones that I've already seen just to save time. But the boss fights, they're a bit different. My god, man, it is beautiful. Oh, he actually slammed me with a tail. Yeah, this this uh this boss actually has some levels to it. Oh Oh god! Alright. I'm gonna lie, man. Strafing's a little bit overpowered. There you go. I killed it. Look at it, look at that death animation. I really appreciate that each boss in this game has their own attack pattern, unique abilities, and cutscenes. You can see a lot of effort's been put into them. But again, unfortunately, a lot of it is just point and shoot. Now, like I mentioned earlier, abilities are useful. You can use different abilities against enemies. But this earth power up, I felt was maybe a little bit too strong. You see, you can stick enemies to the ground with stone, and this also applies to some of the bosses. Naturally, the more power ups you get, the more powerful you become. But the issue was that the bosses didn't really seem to scale with that. Now, it is possible to turn up the difficulty. There are different options for it. But the only change is health and damage, which essentially just extends your playtime. However, I will say that not all bosses were that simple, like this alien that flew into the wall earlier. Like, I'm gonna be real honest with you guys, uh, things have uh, stepped up a notch and I don't really know if I'm gonna last for that long, but hey, you know what man? It's gonna be a good time. We're gonna, we're gonna have a good time. Alright, I'm dead. Okay. This is a little bit more difficult. Compared to the other bosses, this was a challenge because the environment changed. I had to jump from platform to platform whilst being hunted by a guy that I, I couldn't even stone to death. And the result of that was that I had to learn his pattern. Regardless of my skill issues, I enjoyed this game. I wouldn't say there was anything revolutionary about it, but I could see the love and effort put into this. The only thing really holding it back was the combat and that made things a little bit repetitive. But at least they tried to make things interesting with the enemies and different abilities as well as some platforming levels that were a little bit stressful. So you know what? I'm gonna give this game best boss death ever and a 10. In all seriousness, you did a good job. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this new format. It's it's something different. I think doing more short form reviews allows me to cover more games that I want to share from my wish list. And, and trust me when I say this, there are a lot of weird and wonderful games to share. So with that, I'm going to say a massive thanks to all my supporters, both on Patreon and those who got themselves whizzed on this channel. But of course, to finish off, a massive shout out to all of my Wicked Slayers, and cyber wizards. Gibbles by the dozen, Nick, Moldy, Smelly Man, Waller, The Cuddly Bot, Negadan, The One with Severed Toes, Abby, Azalea, Martin, Alexis, Basto, Finra, Linka, Mr. Pine, Spooky, Rosal Bagatti, King Swing, Distant Reality, Legea Yana, Acadius, Adam, Times Twice, Chris Blaga, Scotched Eggs, Big Ram, Grimber, Umbifsks, Nikot the Brave, Borky, and Ninja Cat 8. And I'll see you guys in the next one.